Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to continue on in the One Year Bible. If you are new here, please consider subscribing and make sure you hit the notification bell so you do not miss a thing. So we are going to continue on in Leviticus 4, 1 through 5, 19. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, When anyone sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, if the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, he must bring to the Lord a young bull without defect as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. He is to present the bull at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. He is to lay his hand on his head and slaughter it there before the Lord. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and carry it into the tent of meeting. He is to dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord in front of the curtain of the sanctuary. The priest shall then put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of fragrant incense that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting. The rest of the bull's blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of the burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He shall remove all the fat from the bull of the sin offering, all the fat that is connected to the internal organs, both kidneys with fat on them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver which he will remove with the kidneys. Just as the fat is removed from the ox sacrificed as a fellowship of as a fellowship offering, then the priest shall burn them on the altar of burnt offerings. But the hide on the bull and all its flesh as well as the head and legs, the internal organs and the intestines. That is all the rest of the bull. He must take outside the camp to a place ceremonially clean where the ashes are thrown and burn it there in the wood fire on the ash heap. If the whole Israelite community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though the community is unaware of the matter, when they realize their guilt and the sin they committed because becomes known, known, the assembly must bring a young bull as a sin offering and present it before the tent of meeting. The elders of the community are to lay their hands on the bull's head before the Lord, and the bull shall be slaughtered before the Lord. Then the anointed priest is to take some of the bull's blood into the tent of meeting. He shall dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle it, before the Lord seven times in front of the curtain. He is to put some of the blood on the horns of the altar that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting. The rest of the blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of the burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He shall remove all the fat from it and burn it on the altar and do with this bull just as he did with the bull for the sin offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for the community and they will be forgiven. Then he shall take the bull outside the camp and burn it as he burned the first bull. This is the sin offering for the community. When a leader sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the commands of the Lord, his God, when he realizes his guilt, and the sin he has committed becomes known, he must bring as his offering a male goat without defect. He is to lay his hand on the goat's head and slaughter it at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered before the Lord. It is a sin offering. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood into the base of the altar. He shall burn all the fat on the altar as he burned the fat on the fellowship offering. In this way, the priest, shall, the priest will make anoint atonement for the leader's sin, and he will be forgiven. If any member of the community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, when they realize their guilt and the sin they have committed becomes known, they must bring as their offering for the sin they committed a female goat without defect. They are to lay their hands on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it at the place of the burnt offering. Then the priest is to take some of the blood with his finger 
and put it on the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. They shall remove all the fat just as the fat is removed from the fellowship offering and the priest shall burn it on the altar as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them and they will be forgiven. If someone brings a lamb as a sin offering, they are to bring a female without defect. They are to lay their hand on its head and slaughter it for the sin offering at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. They shall remove all the fat just as the fat is removed from the lamb of the fellowshipping of the fellowship offering and the priest shall burn it on the altar on top of the food offerings presented to the Lord. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them for the sin they have committed and they will be forgiven. If anyone sins because they do not speak up when they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they have seen or heard, learned about, they will be held responsible. If anyone becomes aware that they are guilty, if they unwittingly touch anything ceremonial unclean, whether the carcass of an unclean animal, wild or domestic, or of any unclean creature that moves along the ground, and they are unaware that they have become unclean, but then they come to realize their guilt, or if they touch human uncleanliness, anything that would make them unclean, even though they are unaware of it, but then they learn of it and realize their guilt. And if anyone thoughtlessly takes an oath to anything, whether good or evil, in any matter, one might carelessly swear about it, even though they are unaware of it, but when they learn it of it and realize their guilt, when anyone becomes aware of that they are guilty in any of these matters, they must confess in what way they have sinned, as a penalty for the sin they have committed. They must bring to the Lord a female lamb or goat from the flock as a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for them for their sin. Anyone who cannot afford a lamb is to bring two doves or two young pigeons to the Lord as a penalty for their sin, one for a sin offering and the other for the burnt offering. They are to bring them to the priest who shall first offer the one for the sin offering. He is to wring its head from its neck, not dividing it completely, and, and is to splash some of the blood of the sin offering against the side of the altar. The rest of the blood must be drained out of the base of the altar. It is a sin offering. The priest shall then offer the other as a burnt offering in the prescribed way and make atonement for them for the sin they have committed and they will be forgiven. If, however, they cannot afford two doves or two young pigeons, they are to bring an offering for their sin, a tenth of an ephed, of the finest flour for a sin offering. They must not pull olive oil or incense. They must not put olive oil or incense on it because it is a sin offering. They are to bring it to the priest who shall take a handful of it as a memorial portion and burn it on the altar on top of the food offering offerings presented to the Lord. It is a sin offering. In this way the priest will make priest will make atonement for them for any of these sins they have committed, and they will be forgiven. The rest of the offering will belong to the priest, as in the case of the grain offering. The Lord said to Moses, When anyone is unfaithful to the Lord by sinning unintentionally in regard to any of the Lord's holy things, they are to bring to the Lord as a penalty a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value in silver, according to the sanctuary shekel. It is a guilt offering. They must make restitution for what they have failed to do in regard to the holy things pay an additional penalty of, fifth, of a fifth of the value and give it all to the priest. The priest will make atonement for them with the ram as a guilt offering, and they will be forgiven. If anyone sins and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though they do not know it, they are guilty, and they will be held responsible. They are to bring to the priest as a guilt offering a ram from the flock, one without defect 
and of the proper value. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them, for the wrong they have committed unintentionally, and they will be forgiven. It is a guilt offering, and they will, and they have been guilty of wrongdoing against the Lord. I'm going to read Mark 2, 13 through 3, 6. Again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Elphias, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw them eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the, the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, How is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have with him with them. They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read that David did have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abathar the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is, Lord, is Lord's even of the Sabbath. Another time Jesus went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for, one, for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Now we're going to read Psalms 36, 1-12 through 12 for the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord. I have a message from God in my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before their eyes. In their own eyes, they flatter themselves too much to detect or hate their sin. The words of their mouths are wicked and deceitful. They fail to act wisely or do good. Even on their beds, they plot evil. They commit themselves to a sinful course and do not reject what is wrong. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains, your justice like the deep, like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God! Take 
People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Continue your love to those who know you. Your righteousness is to the upright in heart. May the foot of a prow of the proud not come against me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. See how the evildoers lie fallen, thrown down, not able to rise. Now we're going to read Proverbs 10, 1 through 2. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son brings grief to his mother. Ill-gotten treasures have no lasting value, but righteousness delivers from death. And that's going to do it for this week in the One Year Bible. I hope to see you next Thursday as we continue on in the One Year Bible. Hope you have enjoyed this and hope to see you next week.